After our time-lapse video, a lot of you wanted to know how we actually build that Threadripper rig. A step-by-step -step guide to it, so here we are. Hey guys, Sundar here and today on c 4 a Tech, we have for you a build guide to our Threadripper build. Before we get started though, we have a giveaway running for you guys. Here's a card to it, as well as a link in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to click on that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our daily content. <laughs> First up, let's start with the motherboard. Let's get it out of the box. Take it out of the anti-static wrap and place it on a piece of cardboard. Next, let's get the Threadripper and take it out of its case. You know your CPU packs in some serious horses when it comes with its dedicated screwdriver. Now Threadrippers go into the TR4 socket and the installation process isn't exactly what you'd find on other traditional processors. Use the included screwdriver to release the hatch. The order of unscrewing the screws is shown. Three two and one to open. Once done, pull it upwards. Remove the bit of plastic and now you're all set to slide your CPU in. Get the Threadripper out of its enclosure and slide it into the metal hatch. Remove the plastic covering that protects the CPU socket and then gently lower down the CPU into the socket. Screw it in with the screwdriver. This time, one, two, and three. Now don't screw them all in at one go. We screw a little bit in and screw in the same 1, 2 and 3 sequence until the screws are well tightened. We use this gradual tightening method because if you screw one end in completely while the others haven't yet been screwed in at all, it exerts excess pressure on the CPU. In extreme cases, that might even cause the CPU to bend. Screws in and that's it. Let's now get to the case. To the left, we have the tempered glass side panel. We have to remove that and the metal side panel to the right as well. Now let's put the case face down on the table so we can easily put our components inside it. The shroud for the PSU has to come off, so let's unscrew that one. Now before we can install a motherboard, we need to first have the IO shield in place. So let's put that one into its slot. Before we can put the motherboard in, we also need to remove the shroud for the drive cages. So let's now unscrew that metal piece as well. Now we have a clean case and we can put the motherboard. This is an ATX motherboard so we have to screw the standoffs in place for an ATX board. As you can see, the standoffs for the ATX board is very clearly marked with A. For micro ATX it is M and for mini ATX it is I. So no matter which motherboard size you have, you can follow the alphabet that is written next to the holes for the motherboard standoffs. And in our case, screw the 9 of them in there. Now line up the motherboard so that the I.O. at the back of the motherboard perfectly coincides with the I.O. shield that we placed before. And gently lower the motherboard onto the standoffs. Now take the screws that have been provided with your motherboard and gently screw them in place. Generally I prefer to start from the top left corner and go in a clockwise direction. Remember to screw the one in the middle, it is very important. Next up, we slot the PSU into the case and align the holes on the back of the PSU with the holes we have in the cabinet and screw it into place. Same for the hard drives.
match up the holes on the hard drives with the holes on the hard drive sleds and then screw in place. Don't remove the rubber grommets to the sides of the hard drive base. They are there to reduce vibration and extend the longevity of your mechanical storage. Of course, the end with the connectors must face the back of the case. Screw the hard drive sleds into their place. Now it's time to run some of the cables from the power supply. The Cooler Master V1000 is a modular power supply and the Cosmos C700P is a spacious chassis to build in, so cable management isn't really much of an issue. One, two, and this is how it goes. At the top of the motherboard, we have one 8-pin as well as one 4-pin connector for the CPU. Just below, we have the 24-pin connector for the motherboard itself. Now, as I said, cable management is a priority. So we routed the two 8 and 4-pin connectors through the first cable management slot and clicked them in. The 24-pin connector is a huge one and takes up a lot of space. So we decided to route it through the second one. There's only one way these can go in. So just follow the bump on the connector. That's where the tiny latch is supposed to grip onto. Orient it and press down. You shall hear a satisfying click as the connectors slot into place. See that the N-Smart PSU are firmly connected to the power supply. Time to plug in the rest of the cables as well. There's the SATA power cable from the hard drives. They also go in one way. We route them through the bottom of the case. Turn the case around and then slot them into place. Generally, each SATA power cable has multiple headers, so you can reduce the clutter by using the SATA power cable to power your hard drives. If you have an extra head left, you can tuck it in like I did in between the two power cables so that the clutter is reduced. And after that, we have the USB 3.1 cable for the front header. We are routing this from the front of the case through one of the many cable management holes in the metal plate into its place. Now, since this case has multiple 3.1 ports, we have to take the second cable and plug that in to the additional USB 3.1 port in the bottom of the motherboard. With that done, let's now connect the SATA cables. Take one end and pressing in the metal clasp, slide it into the slot on the motherboard. Now route the cable through the slot and to the back of the case. Here you can now plug it into the back of the HDD. Same for the second hard drive as well. Let's now remove two of the metal plates from the back of the case so that our GPU can slot in there. Now let's remove the motherboard shroud and plug the M.2 SSD in there. Done. Let's now screw it in place so that the SSD doesn't fall out. And finally screw the shroud back in. With that out of the way, let's plug in the cables for the rest of the connectors, the power button, HDD activity, LED and others. Now all of these cables originate from the front panel and they have very tiny heads that can be difficult to plug into the motherboard directly. This is where this tiny connector that comes with most modern motherboards comes in handy. You can match the plugs to the labels on both the wires as well as the connector and plug them in. 
Once that's done, simply slide the connector into the motherboard pins for front I.O. and you're done. Time to put the GPU in. It's slot in carefully into the PCI Express lane and press down till you hear an audible click. Then screw the card firmly in place using the screws that you removed while discarding the two PCIe backplates from the back of the case. Now to power the 1080 Ti, we need two sets of 6 plus 2 pin connectors. So let's first route them through the back of the case and cable management slot and then plug them into the GPU one by one. Press on the little lever and push them into place and you can hear the audible click once they're in place. Next, let's also connect the case RGB lights to the RGB header at the top of the motherboard. Just slide them into the pins marked as RGB header and that's it. Now we have to put the water cooler in. The first step is to remove the top dust filter and then screw the radiator into place. You can go for either a push or a pull configuration here depending upon your desired airflow. Next, take a generous helping of thermal paste and we dollop it onto the CPU. Then use the TR4 mounting brackets and screw them into the copper cooling block of the all-in-one, like this. Place the cooling block on top of the CPU and if you have the mounting brackets correctly installed, the screws should slot into place on the motherboard. Screw the Master Liquid ML240L into place. Always screw it in a cross pattern like this so as to avoid exerting too much pressure on the CPU and motherboard socket. Finally, we can slot the RAM into place. Check for the indentation on the RAM on the motherboard and line them up. Then firmly push them into place till you hear the click sound. Before we can slot in the next set of RAMs on the left, we first have to connect the pump of the master liquid onto its correct slot on the motherboard. Now let's route the cable of the pump across the GPU and slot it into place. Put the remaining RAM sticks in and now finally we can turn towards the back. Let's first decrease the wire clutter a bit by using this reverse splitter that takes two of the fan connections from the all-in-one and makes them into one, which is more easy to plug in on the motherboard. The controls for the two fans as well as RGB Aura FX for the entire all-in-one is also connected to the fan controller that resides in one of the SSD trays to the back of the motherboard. With that done, let's finish up the wiring to the front.
this colorful cable you see. That's the connector for the front panel audio. Let's now screw the shrouds back into place and try to boot it up. Hallelujah, it boots and damn look at those RGB lights everywhere. Time for a little bit more of a cable management. Let's tuck these cables in neatly in the back and put the Aurasync controller into its place at the back of the motherboard. Replace all the dust filters. Then done. There is your finished Threadripper build. So most of you guys who had already seen the time lapse, wait what? You haven't? Well then go check that out. Here's a card to our playlist of the Threadripper build. Go on, check it out. If you already have checked both our time lapse and what and why videos, then go down below and comment hashtag PC Master Race. Also share this video with everyone and let them know of this beastly hardware. If you have any more build related queries, well then what are you waiting for? Comments right there. And if for some reason you hated this, well you know what to do. But if you love the 32 thread 16 core beast, then smash that like button, get subscribed to the channel and click on the bell icon to get notified every time a video goes live on the channel. The gaming and benchmarks should follow soon. Thanks a lot for watching, this is Sundar from C4E Tech, leaving for the moment. Have a great day.